in the previous uh, video, we already said that here, uh, MPLC times PC, this red curve is the labor demand curve um, in cloth industry, right? Uh, similarly, we can derive the labor demand curve in food, okay? As you could imagine, it's going to be downward sloping. It's very similar to this, um, this uh, one, okay, uh, for cloth. Now, once we have uh, the labor demand curves for both industries, uh, the next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to, this is a very important moment, okay, we're going to flip the labor demand curve in food and put it on the top of this one in front of you, the labor demand curve in cloth. Let me say this again. We're going to flip the labor demand curve uh, in food and put that on the top of this labor demand curve in cloth. That's how we end up with this one. Okay, now here, uh, the blue curve, the, it's downward sloping. That's a demand curve for labor in cloth. So this is a regular one, and you should refer to the left uh, y-axis, okay, uh, which is a marginal product or uh, wage rate, okay. And the horizontal axis is still labor, okay, hired. Or employed in the cloth industry okay now because we flipped the labor demand curve in food so that's why you see this red curve here okay uh, you may think it looks like it's upward sloping but it's actually not because you're supposed to refer to the right uh, vertical axis this one here okay again um, uh, the horizontal axis is the amount of labor employed in food. But remember, this time, the origins is here, okay? So when we move towards the, towards the left, that means the more of labor employed in food industry, okay? So this is a little counterintuitive, okay? So, um, but if you look at these, you know, from the from the right to the left, you would find that the red curve here is still a downward sloping, okay? Now here, uh, how could we find the equilibrium? Because remember, we said we, we flip the labor demand curve in food and put on the top of that in cloth, right? And we can actually move these uh, two demand curves. Uh, for example, we can move this demand curve in food a little bit to the left, right? And then we're going to see the probably the new equilibrium, uh, the equilibrium, the intersection point would be here, or we can move it a little bit to the left, to the right, and then the intersection would be here. So where exactly is the equilibrium? Okay, is that any of the intersection? would be the equilibrium or there's a, a very specific, unique one, okay? We believe, I'm sorry, we believe that, you know, you can definitely move these two graphs, you know, to the left, to the right, but when, you know, the amount of labor hired in cloth, that's LC1, and the amount of labor hired in food, LF1, add up to L, then you find the equilibrium. In other words, very interestingly, because we already have the two demand curves um, on the graph, so the supply is actually down here, okay, below the horizontal axis, okay. So the supply is more like a constraint, okay, to make sure when these two uh, sectors, labor demand, uh, add up to the total labor supply, okay, which is L. Now, once they add up to L, that point would be the equilibrium point on the labor market. In this uh, figure, it's labeled as point one, okay? So when you go to the left 
hit the um, y-axis, then you would find that's the equilibrium wage rate, WY. And uh, if you go down to the horizontal axis, you find that from the left origin to this point, that is LC1. That's how much labor hired in cloth. Okay. Now when we go from the right origin to this point, that's LF1, how much labor hired in food. Okay. Now, um, this is actually a, a graphical trick helping us find uh, the equilibrium on the labor market, okay? Um, but we can also do some, uh, um, you know, drive some economic intuition, okay? Or using an in, uh, intuitive way to prove that, you know, point one would be the market equilibrium. Okay, now let's try this. Um, if we say that, you know, the uh, allocation of labor between the two sectors is right here. In other words, uh, this is how much labor hired in cloth. Okay, and this is how much labor hired uh, in food. Now, what's, what's happening here is when we go up here, we find that, you know, at this point, um, this is how much labor demanded in food, right? If you go to the left, um, you would find that's the wage paid in food industry, okay? Now, if you continue going up, hit this point on the labor demand curve in cloth, and if you go to the left, uh, vertical axis, you find that's how much um, paid in neighbor, uh, I'm sorry, how much paid uh, in cloth, okay, as the wage rate. Now, this time you find the two wage rates um, are different, okay, so uh, the workers will get a higher pay in cloth than their counterpart in food, okay. Now, let's do the economic reasoning. Okay, let's follow our intuition. If workers would get a higher pay in cloth industry, what's going to happen? Obviously, the workers in food industry are going to quit, right? They quit their jobs in food industry and join the cloth industry to get the higher pay, right? Remember, we are here in this uh, model, we assume the labor is a mobile factor, right? So it, it's free to move between the two sectors, okay? There's no kind of the scale bearer here, okay? They can easily choose, you know, working in food or cloth industries. Now, once, you know, some workers quit, um, their jobs in food, we find that, you know, um, the amount of labor in food industry would decrease. That, in turn, would increase the marginal product of labor. Once again, this is because of law of diminishing returns. Okay, once they have the fewer workers, then the, the MPL F will go up. So the product will go up. In other words, we're actually moving this way. So we find that the food industry is shrinking. Okay? Now, because um, in this process, uh, they still want to catch up with, uh, or uh, com I'm sorry, uh, compete with the cloth industry. So the, the uh, food uh, producers have to offer a higher wage to keep their workers, okay? Now, let's look at the opposite uh, side. So, in cloth industry, uh, because they offer a higher wage, so they attract a lot of workers from food industry, right? Once the cloth um, industry hired more workers, the marginal product of labor uh, in cloth would decrease because of LDR, Law of Diminishing Returns. So the products, the product here, uh, 
of price and MPLC would decrease, okay, for a given price. Uh, in other words, they are moving down this way, okay, because they make less money from the uh, market, okay, or less revenue, so they have to reduce their hourly wage. In other words, they cut their wage uh, uh, for their workers, okay. So they're actually moving this way along the blue curve. So eventually they meet at point one, which will be the equilibrium, okay? Because over there, it's not gonna move anywhere else, okay? It becomes stable. You can also try, you know, on the right-hand side of the equilibrium point, okay? So as shown by this origin, uh, the um, orange uh, dash line, Okay. I'm going to leave this for you guys to figure out. Okay. You, you use your own um, you know, thinking in trying to figure out if we start from here, then which sector offers a higher wage and what's going to happen to their marginal product of labor, which uh, would eventually you know, bring this back in, um, to the equilibrium. Okay. So um, again, try this by yourself. And um, during our class discussion, I'm gonna ask some of you to you know share your your reasoning with the rest of the class. Okay. All right. So here, basically, you know, uh, at point one, we can figure out how much uh, how many units of labor hired uh, or employed by each sector, right? And once we get LC and LF. Then we plug back into the um, the demand function. We will be able to solve the market equilibrium wage, right? Also with LC one, LC LF one, then we would be able to figure out, you know, how how many units of cloth and food this economy can produce. Okay, so here uh, we already, you know finish our discussion about this alternative way to find the optimal allocation of labor between the two sectors. Okay. Now in the next video, we're going to rely more upon math and just show you a, a simpler way uh, to find the answer. Okay. Because here, you know, it looks like it, it took a while for us to get here, but uh, we're going to, you know, in the next video, introduce a uh, a simpler way to find the answer.